particular part. One moment, please, class. Okay. Now, shear force and bending moment diagram. So, try to recall back into ES 152 shear force and bending moment diagram, and uh, I will bring you through again briefly the, the steps involved. So, I make use of this very simple example of a simply supported beam. This is a very uh, simple example of simply supported beam. Okay. So, simply supported beam, we have one end here pin support the other end roller so this is a simply supported beam simply supported beam and the loading 54 kN 135 kN point load and 3 meter 3 meter 3 meter so the span is 9 meter so the steps involved is get the reaction force so first step get the reaction force so the red color here these are the reaction force so normally this is the first steps so get reaction force by now, you should be able to do that. So just use the corresponding equilibrium equations and get the reaction force, BY108, AY81 kilonewton. So class, this is a first step, and this is an important step because this is a first step. And if the reaction forces are calculated wrongly, then of course the rest of the your shear force bending moment and shear force diagram bending moment diagram will also be wrong in terms of the value. And so very important to get these steps correct. So the next step is by now, if you if I ask you to recall, imagine the, in your mind, the next step is because you are asked to draw shear force diagram and bending moment diagram. So shear force diagram and bending moment diagram are actually shear force diagram and bending moment diagram are a diagram showing what happened, what is the value of shear force here at this section, at this section, at this section, at this section, and at the section all along the beam and also bending moment. So these are the diagram. So it shows it shows the the variations yeah, at each section starting from the left hand side and then until the end of the beam. So along the whole axis of the beam, how does the shear force changes? That is shear force diagram. And how does the bending moment diagram change from the section on the left, from the left here until the end of this beam here? How do they how does it change? That is the bending moment diagram. Okay. So to, to draw that, so you have to know first how do they change? Okay, how do they change along the beam? So how do they change along the beam? You get in terms of equations. Equations that represent how do they change. Okay, so let's look at how do you do that. So this is a revision. So now, so we have to decide number of cut section needed. So you have to decide how many cut section we need, depending on the loading conditions. Okay, and here we have we have to cut here three times between A to C once, between C to D once, between D to B once, because this is where the equations or the patterns of variations would be different for A to C, C to D and D to B. So this is the second step after you've done the first step, get the reaction force. The second step is to you have to decide the number of cut sections, the minimum number of cut sections needed to calculate S and M. So after that, you proceed to part by part. So in order to get the bending moment variations and shear force also shear force variation and bending moment variations we start with portion ac where we first make the first cut and we have to indicate where is the cut section in general for this ac which is we need to indicate this coordinate x and where it starts from it starts from an a here 
and A here. So we draw the free body diagram so we can make use of, if we cut this, then we make use of the left hand side of the cut. So we indicate the positive direction for shear and bending moment and we indicate this X here. So don't forget to indicate this X here. X here, this represent in general a section within this portion A to C. What we are doing now, we decide the shear force and bending moment variations in the form of equations in this portion AC, where the first cut is. So make use of equilibrium equations, then we get shear force. Make use of moment equilibrium equation at the cut sections class. Take it at the cut section that we get bending moment. And we indicate the X. This is for portion AC. So the X start from origin A here. So X varies from zero until three. Until AC, the portion length is three. So this is for portion AC. So we got the variation for shear and variation for bending moment. So shear constant moment is as a function of X here. Repeat the same process for next portions where the shear force and bending moment variation is required. The next portion is C to D. And we make a cut here and our X again start from A to indicate the location of these sections in general within C to D. We start again from A. So that is where the X is. Start again from A. Then we draw the free body diagram. Again, we make use of the portions to the left hand side of the cut, indicate the correct, the positive direction of shear going down and counterclockwise if you use the left hand side. Then the next is repeat the process. Get the shear force using equilibrium equation forces and get the bending moment using moment equilibrium equation. Take moment at the cut sections then we get shear again constant moment a function of x the x here now we start from a here but this is for indication this is for c to d we are getting the variation of shear force and bending moment for this portion c to d so the x takes the value between 3 and 6 between 3 and 6 this is 3 and 6 is for portion C to D with the X starting from A as the origin. So do the same thing. So now we are looking at this portion DB now. Portion DB, portion DB. We have finished A, C, C, D. So to complete, knowing the variations, we need to also get the variation of shear force and bending moment for this portion DB. So portion DB, again, we cut here, but now X, just now we start from A and A as origin. Now we start from B as origin. X, we start from B as origin for this portion DB. Draw the free body diagram and we use the right hand side of the cut sections as a free body diagram. So the positive direction for shear is upwards. Positive direction for bending moment is clockwise. Then, you know by now, get the, write down the equilibrium equation of force in y direction, you get S. Take moment at the cut sections, you get M. Then S again is constant, M again is a function of X. Now X is indicating the location of the sections in general within D and B, and we start from B, so X takes the value from between zero and three, between zero and three. So this is how we complete the next steps, getting the shear force variations and bending moment variations along the whole beam. Here, because portion AC, CD and DB, the variations, the pattern of variations will be different. So we do three times the process, corresponding to three minimum cuts that we need to do. Then if we combine them, all the equations that we obtain, then we get shear force diagram constant here, then constant again here, then constant negative here for these portions. Shear force is a function of X, meaning that it is a straight line for this part, straight line for this part, straight line for this part. 
And in order to know, in order to know the, to draw a straight line, because it's a straight line, we just need to know the starting value, the ending value. Starting value, the ending value, starting value, the ending value, you connect them, then you are able to get the bending moment diagram if it is a straight line. Okay. So this is the third step, the final step, and this is a crucial one which you need to draw correctly. And this one is obtained from the calculations that we have done for portion this part, portion this part, portion this part, get the variations in the form of equations. Then we transfer here and write, draw the diagram to complete the questions. So here we need to indicate, class, you need to indicate this is shear force diagram, SFD we short form, and the unit, you can add it here or you can indicate directly here, kilonewton, and no need to put here, or you just put the value here and you put, you group the unit to be here, either way, but the important thing is you must show that which one is your shear force diagram, which one is your bending moment diagram. If you just leave it without the name, so is it not sure this one is your shear force diagram or this one is your bending moment diagram. So give name to the diagram class, give name to this diagram. So that it is clear this diagram is for what. And it is a good practice to always show the original problem itself, then the corresponding shear force diagram and bending moment diagram so that we can see easily. So this is my loading conditions. This is a support condition and this is a shear force diagram that we get and this is a bending moment diagram that I get. So class, these are the things that uh, we have to go through and you have gone through that thing. So this is just to bring you back, refresh back, get you back into that, uh, that chapter again okay, that you have learned. So first thing, get the reaction force. Next, decide how many cuts that you need. Then for each of the cuts which represent the different portions that you have to determine the variation. So you repeat the process of drawing the uh, shear force, uh, drawing the free body diagram at the cut sections and then indicate the positive direction for shear force and bending moment and then use equilibrium equation to get the variations of the shear force and bending moment for that particular portions or part, which is represented in the form of equations. It can be constant, it can be a function of x. It can also be a function of x squared. But it will be in the form of equations representing the variations. Then finally, represent them correctly in the form of diagram. And when you draw a diagram, indicate the name clearly. Shear force diagram, bending moment diagram. Okay. So let's look at another example. This is just an example. This is a, a simple, simply supported beam with the overhang here. With the overhang, just now we get simply supported. So simply supported, now let me go back. Simply supported, you have a shear force here, 81, negative 108. This is the same as the reaction force here. The magnitude is the same as reaction force here. And you get here simply supported, simply supported with no loading, no loading there. Then you get moment, bending moment zero, bending moment zero here. Next, we go to simply supported with overhang, overhang free here. This is free, not supported here. So this is uh, overhang. We call overhang. Okay. So now this point load. Now adding one load, which is a concentrated moment at this particular point here, and distributed load distributed load. So the process is the same. So you check statical determinacy. This is uh, you should be able to check without any problem. This is statically beam is very clear. Support reactions, the first step to calculate. So this is point A pin support, point D roller support. So you have to use the three equilibrium equations then we can get support reaction dy 44.44. AY is equal to 35.556 going upward. So solve the first step. This is the first step. Get this part correctly, class. Okay. 
Second, you have to decide how many cups are needed. How many cups are needed? So in this particular example, we need minimum four cups, and the four cups will be the first one between A and B, the second one between B and C, the third one between C and D, and the last one between D and E for four times the minimum number of cuts. And you must uh, know where to cut minimum between which point and which point. Here, four cuts are needed. Four cuts are needed means you have to repeat the process of getting shear force and bending moment for each of the parts four times. Okay. So the next is go through part by part. So the first portion AB, so the calculation is to get shear and bending moment for this part here. What is the variation now? X start from A, X origin from A, indicate until the section where we cut. So the positive shear, positive M, this one already calculated. So this one is the first step that you need to do. Then equilibrium equations, then you get shear bending moment, shear constant moment, let's say. So when the zero is X here, it is a straight line. It is a straight line. And how to get a straight line? You need to know one point in the beginning, one point at the end. So the beginning is zero, the end is three. You substitute there, so you get two points. Then you can connect them, and that gives you a straight line. And that is a bending moment variations for this part A to B later on when you want to draw. So the next one is now you should get into the Understanding now, the next is go to the next portion now. Get to the next portions. I call it portion, you can call it parts. Portion where? BC. We finish with AB, where the first cut is, then go to BC where the second cut is. So since the second cut is anywhere between B and C. So X again start from origin A. Then correct positive shear, positive bending moment direction. So you get Equilibrium equation from the equilibrium equation, I get S is equal to negative 14.444. S going down, yeah, plus this one going down 50 equal to going up. Then we get S is equal to negative 14.444. Bending moment, take at the cut section. Take moment at the cut section. So bending moment, this one is equal to, this is the same direction of this. So bring it to the other side, it becomes negative. 50 multiply with perpendicular distance will be x minus 3. So this one is the same direction as this. So if you bring to the other side, it becomes negative. So this one is opposite direction to this. So you bring it to the other side, it becomes positive here. 35.556 multiply with x. So give you bending moment in the form of there's an X here. So if there's an X here, meaning that, again, this is a straight line. This is, this is supposed to be a straight line, okay, class? Straight line. So get the end value and the, the start value at the end value by substituting X is equal to 3. Into this, you get the starting value. X is equal to 6. You get the end value, connect them. You get the bending moment diagram, the variation for B to C. The X here class gives you, it shows the point within B to C, any point, any section between B to C. So, so X varies from 3 to 6. So X varies from 3 to 6. Origin start from here. X is not 0 to 6. X is 3 to 6 because X represent any sections within B to C, which is 3 to 6. So next, proceed to the next portion, C to D. Now C to D, I use X starting from E now, instead of starting from A, like portion A, B, and B, C. A, B, and B, C. Okay, so now the, the same process, the same process, Write down the uh, positive 
uh, indicate the positive direction for shear, positive direction for bending moment. So positive direction here because now I'm using the left hand side of the cut, the free body diagram, so it's going up as positive and clockwise as positive for bending moment. The X starting the origin from E now, and this is for portion CD. Okay, so take the equilibrium equation as this is going up and will be equal to this one coming down, which is coming down, which is phi multiplied with x1 here coming down. And then this negative 44.444, this is going up same direction as this. So we bring to the, the other side, it becomes negative. And, or this one plus this one minus this equal to zero. So you get S is equal to one minus. So X1 appear now here. So you get X1 appear now. Okay. So you get X1 appear now, which is. One second, please. So you get S1 appear here now in uh, variation for shear or equation for shear for this part C to D. For bending moment, take moment at the cut section for this moment plus the moment caused by this distributed load, which is phi x1 plus x1 over uh, minus phi x1 multiply x1 multiply x1 over 2, and then minus this, which is the moment caused by this at the cut section, which is dy multiplied with x1 minus 3. So if you simplify, then you get m is equal to equation like this, where you get x1 squared. There's an x1 squared here. So this is for portion C to D. So the x will be to indicate any of the section between C to D or D to C. So the x changes from 3 to 6 x changes from 3 to 6 that is from d until c here the last sections the last portions the same thing the last portions we cut we cut here then we use the part on the right hand side of the cut on the right hand side of the cut and this is a free body diagram then using equilibrium equations then we get shear there is an x here and bending moment, there is x squared here. And the x1, the origin start from E, origin start from E, and it represents any of the section between E to D, so it takes value from 0 to 3. So this is determine the variations of shear force and bending moment of different parts along the beam. So we have covered part AB, part BC, or portion BC, portion CD, and portion DE, and we get in the form of equations. Now, the important one is to transfer this in the form of equations, uh, the diagram, sorry. So, shear force diagram and bending moment diagram, let's start with shear force diagram. So, this is a good practice to, to show the the problem itself and then indicate all the reaction forces that you have calculated. Then for AB, for AB, shear is constant. Shear force is constant, positive, so we draw here. Constant, 35.556. So the next portion is constant again, but become negative now. Negative. So we put it down here, negative 14.444. So these are constant and constant. But the next one is, there is a X1 now. So X1 meaning that is a straight line. So get the value, starting value, end value. Substitute X1 and 3, you get this, which should be equal to negative 14.444. Substitute X is equal to 6 into these equations, then you get S is equal to this value, connect them, so you get the variation for this part. And finally, this part here, DE, again, it is a X1 here, X1 means it's a straight line, shear, straight line, so X1, remember, for this part and this part, 
So this part and this part, the sorry, the x start from here. Okay, so take note x start from here. So x zero means for this shear force at e here, so zero. X one is equal to three. Three multiplied with five become fifteen. Is for shear at this part because our x start from here. Similarly for this DC, so be careful where you x start from, so that you use correctly the value that you have calculated. So 0 to 15, connect them so you get this. The previous one is x1 is equal to 3. x1 is equal to 3 is for this value. x1 is equal to 6 is for this value. Connect them, then you get this part here. For this part, the x start from here. Yeah? A to B and for B to C also, x start from there. So this is for to complete the shear force diagram. Now to complete the bending moment diagram, bending moment diagram, the equation here, there is an x. x means you have a straight line. And our x start from here. The x start from here. So x0, moment 0. So that's why you get 0 here. x is equal to 3 multiplied with this, you get this value. So you connect them with straight line with straight line, because this is x. It's like your mathematics, a straight line. Y is equal to mx plus c, so x is a straight line. The second part, also straight line, because there is an x here. And the x start from here again. So, but x is equal to 3, you get this value. x is equal to 6, you substitute, you get this value. This value. Connect them so you complete the variations of bending moment diagram for this part. So X here, X here, straight line, straight line. The third one is X1 square now. This is X1 square. So X1 square means the variations is not straight line anymore, but curve. This is a parabolic curve. So if we try to get the starting value, but now x1 start from here. So x1 is substitute equal to 3, we get this value. And x1 substitute as equal to 6, we get this value. Remember your x start from where? And then where is the section it represents? So we have to connect this using a curve. Now, whether it is curved, because the curve can curve like this, it can curve like this. So whether it is curving like this and curving like this, we look at this. The coefficients in front of x1 square here, which is multiplied with x1 square. If it is negative, negative, then it should be curving in this way. If it is positive, then it should be curving this way. So that is how we decide. And later on, we are going to look at uh, another way of deciding whether the curve, because it curve, it can curve in this way, it can also curve the other way. But for this portion, the correct one is curving up like this for the variations. This is by looking at the coefficients here, uh, in where you multiply with the x square. If it is negative, then it should be curving, curving up like this. So the last part here, it is also a square, so it, it is a curve, but the x1 again start from here. x0, you get 0, that's why this is 0. So x substitute with 3 multiplied with 2.5. 3 square multiplied with 2.5, negative, you get this value here. And it is a curve, so we connect them again with a curve. So again, whether it should be curving this way, or why is not curving this way? It should be curving this way because here x square is multiplied with negative 2.5. So it should be curving like this. As I mentioned later on, we are going to see how actually we, we are going to see another way to, de to decide whether the curve should be like this or should be the other way around. But for this particular way, if you are using equations, then look at the multiplier, the coefficients which is multiplied with the x squared there. 
If it is negative, then it should be curving like this. If it is positive, then we curve like this, as shown in this example. So this is the completions of the shear force and bending moment diagram. And there are some characteristics that we can get from here. There are some characteristics that we can get from here. The first characteristic is, the first characteristics that we can take note from here is that when you do not have distributed load, when you do not have distributed load, then the shear force is constant, constant. And when there's a constant here, constant here, we connect this, you know, this, this one and this one with the straight line here, the vertical straight line, you connect them. Here also, A to B, you, you draw a straight line here, constant, and then B suddenly jump to other value, you connect them with a straight line. Then no distributed load, straight line again. When there is a uniformly distributed load, the shear force become a straight line with gradient not a constant anymore. And the same thing here. That's why CD and DE here, you have a straight line with gradient, straight line with gradient, not constant anymore, because there is a distributed load UDL acting here. And whenever there is a point load, whenever there is a point load, we consider this support reaction also as a kind of point load. There is a jump, and there is a jump in value. When you come down here and you start from left hand side, jump up or jump down, it follows. If 50 kN, when you come here, jump down 50, goes to negative, constant again. Then there's no jump here because there's no point load here. This is concentrated moment, this is not point load. Then straight line with gradient. Come until here again. And there is a jump here again at D because there is a this support reaction in the form of point load, so it jump up equivalent to 44.444, so from negative jump until positive value. And then the distributed load, uniformly distributed load, then straight line with gradient again back to zero. That is for shear force. Bending moment, if there is no distributed load, only point load involved, so you get the bending moment variation straight line. At the particular point load here, you have a sudden, a very sharp corner here. Then straight line again, because there is no distributed load. Then when there is a concentrated moment, depending on its clockwise or counterclockwise, then you get a jump here. You get a jump here. If you start from left hand side, and if this concentrated load is in the form of counterclockwise directions, so it will jump down, causing negative jump. So 63.336 here. Then after that, because of a concentrated moment here, 20 kN counterclockwise, so it jumped down by negative 20 to 43.332. So the difference between this and this between this and this, the difference is 20, which is equal to this. Okay, it, but it jumped down. Okay. Then, when there's a distributed load, then you get curve, eh? parabolic curve, and the same thing here, curve. Here. <coughs> so these are the characteristics that you should recall associated with the shape of shear force diagram at bending moment diagram corresponding to the loading, corresponding to loading. This understanding or realization of this characteristic is helpful for you to check any shear force diagram or bending moment diagram which is drawn, whether it is drawn correctly, reasonable or not. For example, for shear force diagram, if there's no jump here, that there's a point load here, then that shear force diagram is not correct. If there is no point load here, but there is a jump here, then it is not correct. If there's a distributed load here, uniformly distributed load, and your shear force diagram become constant, it is not correct. So these are the characteristics associated with the loading. 
and the diagram that will appear, either in shear force diagram or bending moment diagram, it is helpful for you and for us, I think for us to, to, to judge whether the shear force diagram or bending moment diagram is drawn correctly or not. Now, let me go through a little bit of uh, this before I pause for a while. Now, this is about cutting at the sections. So this method that we are using is section method where you need to do cuts, where you need to do cutting. But when you do, when you need to do cutting, so there are places where there are times when you need to cut at the location where there is no loading, but sometimes you need to cut at the location of the section when there is a loading. This is a loading and this represents support. So it can also represent a kind of uh, loading here. So when you need to cut, and also it can be a concentrated moment acting at a particular point. So the cut sections, what I'm trying to say here is the cut section can be a cut through the location where there is no loading whatsoever, and it can also be a cut where there is a loading. So how do we differentiate between these cut sections and also there is a cut section which is sometimes you need to cut close to the free end here. Cut here and cut here. So what is the, what is the meaning, what is the difference between cut section at these different locations? So cutting at section without any loading and cutting at sections at the point of actions of concentrated load. So when we are looking at this thing, there is no problem. We just cut through the sections and then uh, because there is no loading here. The issues that you need to be aware of when you have a loading here, when you have a loading here. So when we are talking about cutting through the point where there is a there is a load. What we mean is you have to be specific whether you are cutting it just to the left here or just to the right. You cannot cut through the load here and divide the load into two. You cannot do that. So when you need to do cut, cut at the section where there is a loading acting here, either here or here. Reaction support also we consider as a kind of loading. So we have to be clear that either we are cutting slightly just to the right, just to the left here or just to the right. And just to the left, just to the right means this, this distance here, this small distance here is considered as zero, but it's not zero because we cannot cut through the loading here, divide the loading into two, that cannot be. So we have to cut either just to the right, the same thing here. The same thing here when you are talking about, I, I need to cut at the section at the free end here, so we cannot cut through the free end here. So when we're talking about cut through the free end here, so what we mean is we have to cut slightly just to the right of this left hand, left free end. Yeah, slightly just to the right here. So this 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 distance here, this is zero. And this consider as zero distance, but it is not actually zero, but it is practically considered as zero. And the cut section that we need to consider is just to the right of this free end. The same thing here, if you're talking about this, it has to be just to the left of this free end. So the section that we are cutting. So this is the, the notation that we use. Okay, the notations, the symbol that we are going to use in order to represent where we cut. Where we cut, especially at the locations when there is a concentrated load like this, or especially also maybe concentrated moment, or at the free end here, A and E here. So we look at A here, we have to cut at the section just to the right. So just to the right, we move it slightly just to the right, so we put a superscript here, positive. At the point C here, so we can we have to be clear whether we are cutting just to the left or just to the right. 
So just to the left, slightly just to the left, so there's a superscript C negative here. And if just to the right, just, just to the right of this point P, so we put a superscript positive here. And the point E here, we cannot cut through the free end here exactly. We have to cut through slightly just to the left of it. And we use symbol here, superscript negative. So negative is for just to the left of that particular point and positive superscript is just to the right of that particular point. So this is a little bit about just to the left and just to the right of the a point of when there is a loading acting or when there's a free end because we cannot cut through the free end we cannot cut through the loading so we have to cut either just to the left or just to the right and the symbol that we use the symbol that we use here okay so this one will be used later when we look at uh, when we want to draw a shear force diagram and bending moment diagram using another method. So this is just to, to, to let you know that when we are doing a cut sections, especially when we are cutting at the point where there is a loading, we cannot cut through the point where there is a loading. So we have to be clear whether we are cutting just to the left or just to the right. The same thing at, at the free end of the beam here or free end of a member. Okay. Now, this is about characteristics of shear force diagram and bending moment diagram, the characteristics. Okay. This is something that I have, the point that I have pointed out just now. You have to be familiar with these characteristics so that you can judge that the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram drones are reasonable and correct. So the first thing is characteristics of shear force diagram and bending moment diagram, which means the shape of it, effect of types of support, effect of type of support first. So we have pin support, roller support, and thick support. Okay. For pin support, the shear force diagram, you have a value there, and this value is uh, corresponding to the magnitude of the support reaction. So either this is up positive or negative, it depends. But there is a value there. And for bending moment diagram, it is a pin support without any, if there is without any concentrated moment acting here, so you will get that zero. So at the simply supported end, your bending moment diagram at that end must be zero. And the shear force, there must be a value there. And that value is normally the magnitude of that value is the same as the support reactions. And the roller support, you get shear force diagram, there is a value, but for bending moment diagram, there is no value. Now, this is for the case, there is no concentrated moment acting at the support. Okay? So you get bending moment diagram, a bending moment at a roller support zero. But when it comes to fixed support, if you compare this, this at for the bending moment diagram as a fixed support, the bending moment is at a fixed support is not zero anymore, that, that there is a value. But the shear force, there is a value, same like this, pin, roller, there is a value there. But at bending moment diagram, the point at a fixed end, there must be a value there, which is different from the case of pin and roller, no value and no value here. But remember class, this is for the case of simply supported, simply support, there is no loading, no concentrated moment acting at the support. So your bending moment diagram should get zero and zero for pin and roller, but there should be a value if that ends is a fixed support. This is for the case of type of support. Type of loading, type of loading, we, di we, di we divide them into concentrated load, which is point load, and distributed load. It can be uniformly distributed load, it can be linearly distributed. So if it is a concentrated load for shear force diagram, 
no distributed load, then shear force is constant within two concentrated load in that particular portion, constant. And for bending moment, straight line. But if there is distributed load, then in shear force diagram, you get straight line. It can be like this. The, the gradient can be negative, can be positive. Then for bending moment diagram, for bending moment diagram, you have a curve line. You have a curve line. This is curve parabolic x squared. And whether it is curving up or curving down, it depends on the coefficient in front of this. Then you multiply with x squared. If it is negative, then it curves like this. If it is positive, then it curves the other way. And if you have a linearly distributed load, then the shear force diagram now, instead of straight line, become curved. So this becomes x squared parabolic. And this becomes x cubed. Okay, so if this is x, this becomes x squared. If this is x squared, bending moment becomes x cubed. And if this is constant, mean x zero, this becomes x. Okay, so this is effects of types of loading. So it's very important for us to take note of this so that we are able to judge whether the free uh, the bending moment diagram and shear force diagram that has been drawn are correctly drawn or not are they reasonable or not so next time if you see if you see a shear force diagram and also effect of concentrated load and couple if there is a concentrated load here then at the point of that concentrated load when you are looking at the value of the shear force before and after the concentrated load, you get different values. There is a jump here, which means there's a jump here. There's a point load here, again, jump again. Before and after, the values are different. Again, before and after, the values are different, meaning that there's a jump. And in bending, but in bending moment diagram, at the location where there is a point load, in shear force diagram, you have a jump, but in bending moment diagram, there is no jump. There are no jump. But only you have a very sharp king here. Straight line, straight line here, so very sharp corner here, but there is no jump. Bending moment diagram will jump when you have a concentrated moment acting. At that particular point, so before that concentrated moment and after that concentrated moment, at that point, you have a different value. And that is that means there's a jump in the value. And that jump is uh, of this concentrated moment. But in the shear force diagram, at the point load location, there's a jump, but at the concentrated moment location, no jump. Okay, class, please take note of these characteristics, which is associated with locations, uh, the, the shape of shear force diagram, bending moment diagram, when there is concentrated load and couple or concentrated moment. So these are the basic things that is very important to take note of. Okay. Now, let me end with this uh, slide here. Now, the jump in shear force diagram and bending moment diagram, what does it mean? What does it mean? Now I show I show here a simply supported beam. There's a point load here. So the shear force diagram looks like this. The shear force diagram looks like this. And when we are looking at the section, I indicate here the dotted red and the dotted blue here. So the dotted red here meaning that this is a section before the load P, which is just to the left. And this one, the blue one, is the section after the load P, which is just to the right. So if I take out this part here using a free body diagram, then this is what I get. Before the, before the concentrated load on the section just to the left, I have positive shear. I have positive shear. Positive shear means my shear force direction is like this. And after, after this load here, which is just to the right of this load, my shear force is negative. 
Negative shear force here, directions mean it is like this, if I draw on this free body diagram. Okay, so if we consider equilibrium of this, equilibrium of this, so this S, shear force equal to A, shear force equal to B, which is going up, going up must be equal to the concentrated point P acting there. So the reason why there is a jump here is because of this, the necessity to maintain equilibrium. So the shear before the point load and the shear after the point load, they are different. That is the meaning of the jump here. And is indicated by this diagram here. The same thing for bending moment diagram. If I draw a simply supported beam and there's a concentrated moment here, then I get this is a bending moment diagram. So on the section before and the section after, the bending moment is different. So I draw the free body diagram of this section here that I cut on the section just to the left and just to the right, very small portion here. If I show here, then the bending moment on this side is negative. Negative means the direction is like this, the red one. And for the section just to the right, I get bending moment positive so positive means like this so this one plus this one the red one ml plus mr must be equal to mo which is a concentrated moment acting there okay so the reason why there is a jump here is because the, the meaning of the jump here is that the bending moment before on the section to the left just before the point of loading of mo is different is different compared to the section after the load of action of this concentrated moment. So that's why there is a jump like this. And the meaning of this jump is the moment, bending moment before and after this point of action of the concentrated moment, they are different. Here, same thing, shear, mean the shear force on the section before and after this concentrated load, they are different. And this is the meaning of jump. And remember class, in shear force diagram, whenever there is a point load, there must be a jump. But for bending moment diagram, there is no jump at the location of point load. But bending moment will jump at the location of application of concentrated moment. Okay. But shear force diagram, there will be no jump at the location of action of concentrated moment. So that is what I would like to cover today. Let me go back to the screen here.